Welcome to Honest News. The other day, the Lord gave me a word from the Scripture to give me direction, to give His people direction. And the phrase the Lord gave me from the Scripture is, The time draweth near. The time draweth near. Now that comes right from the Gospels. And we're going to read that today. What I'm going to share with you are some very heavy things. Did you hear what I said? Some heavy things. Not to be taken lightly. I'm going to be expounding on much of the Scriptures dealing with the abomination that brings desolation. I'm going to be dealing with the coming of the Lord and the destruction of the third temple. You heard that right. The destruction of the third temple. In the past, the temple was destroyed by Israel's enemies. Amen? And I'm going to prove to you from the scripture that's not going to be the case with the third temple. I'm going to prove to you from the scripture that there are still remnants from the second temple. They still have rocks, they still have stones that have not been destroyed to the degree that Jesus said when he prophesied to and shared with the disciples, not one stone would be left upon another. I want to prove to you from the scripture that those very words Jesus used are the same Words for desolation. Do you hear what I said? This is where we get the abomination that brings desolation. The Lord himself is going to destroy the third temple. Did you hear what I said? The Lord himself is going to destroy the third temple. We begin in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, if you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without or outside the temple, leave it out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles. What God is saying is, He's going to allow the Gentiles to destroy Jerusalem, to the city of Jerusalem, to some degree. But He's not going to allow them to touch the temple. You know why? Because God himself wants to deal with the temple. 
Amen. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Forty and two months. This is the time when God will send forth the two witnesses. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, that man of sin, that wicked, shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people in kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. How'd they torment them? It says they had a testimony. It was the word that tormented them, and it was the plagues that tormented them. The whole earth is rejoicing. But not for long. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Has the spirit of life from God entered into you? And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Great fear. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. I believe that was the last time the gospel would ever be preached on the earth. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Are you listening? A great earthquake. Where did I hear that before? 
We're going to be sharing with you some scriptures, folks, that you may never have heard before. You want to stay tuned for this message. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving to us the holy scriptures. You've given to us the truth. You've given us everything we need, Lord, to make ourselves ready to watch and pray, to be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Lord, you gave me that word from the scripture, the time draweth near. Pray, Lord, you anoint this message, prick the hearts of your people, stir them, Lord, awaken them. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture says when Jesus returns to the earth, there will be a great earthquake. Here we see the great earthquake right after the two witnesses give their testimony. They are preaching the everlasting gospel one last time. Are you listening? It's a mercy of God. He sent two witnesses to preach the gospel. Message of repentance. And there were plagues. So there were signs. Are you listening? Signs and wonders. There were an accompaniment of acts of God so that these that were listening to this message would know that these two witnesses were not just giving a message, but they were with not without they were not without demonstration and power. Amen. You would think this would get people's attention. So this earthquake. I'll prove to you by the scripture, this is Jesus. He's returning. Amen. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravaged, or ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Here he comes, the one that they thought they killed, the one that they thought that they had defeated at the cross. Here he comes. Amen? He's not dead. Listen to me. The resurrected Christ is coming in his glory and his power. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Who is this? His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel, yea, 
you shall flee. Like as you have fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Oh, listen, people, listen. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time, remember Jesus said he's coming as a thief in the night. It's going to be at night when he comes. At evening time, when the sun is going down, when it's about to be dark, it shall be light. Amen. It won't be the sun. It won't be the moon. It won't be the stars. How many know the brightness of his coming? The brightness of his coming. Talking to you about the abomination that brings desolation, folks. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And as his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Has anybody ever looked up these words, thrown down? It means to be disintegrated to the degree that you can't even find the stones. Dissolved. They still have stones from the second temple, people. There's got to be the rebuilding of the third temple. And the Lord himself is going to destroy the third temple. Are you listening to me? He's the one that's going to bring desolation. Listen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to his words. This, remember, this is all about, this is a message around the temple, right? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the same place we just read that he's going to return and set his feet, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming? Notice, this is a sign of his coming. We just told you from the book of Zechariah, just shared with you how he's coming. This is the day of the Lord, the brightness of his coming. And they're asking him, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Listen. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. And all these 
are the beginning of sorrows. Amen? Now, I'd like to just drop down, if we could. Hallelujah. Notice what he says in verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. What are the two witnesses doing? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. You see how it's all going to happen at the same time? Right after the two witnesses give their testimony. Listen, people. The bride by this time is gone. By this time, the church has been caught up. Are you listening? God is going to send for two witnesses to preach the gospel as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. What will the end look like, brothers and sisters? When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. We know this is the same time as the earthquake takes place because it says, let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Just like it says in Zechariah, just like it says in the prophets. Amen. And the Lord says right here that this is great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Are you listening, people? So... We find that it's not only Matthew, but Mark and Luke that record this prophecy that Jesus gave. In all three, they talk about the abomination that brings desolation. Are you listening? Now, you can go and read these yourself, and I encourage you to do that. Read Mark. Luke and Matthew, and I'm going to give you the verses. Go to Matthew 24, verse 1, read that chapter. Mark chapter 13, read that chapter. Luke uh, 21, read that chapter. Because there's different parts and pieces that may be in one book that are not in the other book. Put all the pieces together. This is what I'd like you to see right here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Isn't that the same thing Jesus said? I believe it is. Didn't Jesus say that? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And as his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said unto them, see not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another. That shall not be disintegrated. Dissolved. Found no more. Amen. Notice what Jesus says. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming 
and the end of the world. What's going to be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Notice what Jesus says. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Notice Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you by any means. These two pieces of the puzzle go together, folks. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Remember, Jesus was telling the disciples not one stone would be left upon another concerning the temple who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Where is he? He's in the temple. Are you listening? Oh, Lord God Almighty. Folks, you got to understand something. God's not playing games here. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, that's the Holy Spirit, until he be taken out of the way. Here it is. Here it is. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Notice, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the what? The brightness of his coming. Who's going to destroy the third temple when he destroys that wicked? Amen. The Lord himself. With the brightness of his coming, people. Are you listening? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Lord is coming to bring desolation to the third temple. And he's going to battle with the nations, brothers and sisters. The Lord is coming with ten thousands of his saints. Hallelujah. And after the two witnesses give their testimony, preach the gospel all around the world, then the end will come. Hallelujah. So what does the Lord think about the third temple? What does the Lord think about that wicked sitting in the third temple, showing himself that he's God? It's going to bring desolation and the end of the world. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many today are being caught up in the strong delusion? Amen? They believe that they've got to help to fulfill prophecy, and they're excited about the rebuilding of the third temple. And notice what the Lord says. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You think these evangelicals today think anything about salvation? You think they care about being saved? The last thing you're going to hear them talk about is being saved. They don't talk about being saved. It's not about salvation. It's a better uh, betterment gospel or it's a gospel that you better yourself. It's about getting rich, right? Listen, people, 
Here's the strong delusion. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Who's going to believe the lie? Who's going to get behind and support the rebuilding of the third temple and the abomination that brings desolation? And all they that might be damned who believed not the truth, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. Listen, here it is. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. All those today that have pleasure in unrighteousness are going to be destroyed. These are the ones today that are supporting Israel. These are the ones today that are supporting Zionist Israel. The ones that are getting behind and supporting the rebuilding of the third temple. Are you listening? I want you to understand, people, God's not pleased with the third temple. And especially the one sitting in the third temple showing himself he's God. The Lord himself shall come with all the saints with thee. And the brightness of his coming, he will destroy the third temple to the degree it will never be found again. Not one stone. Hallelujah. That's the same time the Lord's going to destroy that wicked. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to his name, people. Are you going to be with Jesus when he returns? Hallelujah. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints. Hallelujah. Enoch prophesied of this. The Lord is coming with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon the wicked. And I'm going to tell you, folks, that's not the end right there. There's still desolations. There's still things that are going to take place even after the destruction of the third temple. Amen. That's not the end. That just marks the beginning of the millennial reign. Amen. The Lord's going to set up his kingdom for a thousand years. Where is he going to set up his kingdom? After the old Jerusalem is destroyed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says living waters is going to flow out of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We got to remember that God is a spirit. Amen. God is a spirit. Living water is going to flow. And the prophets in the Old Testament prophesied of this. And Ezekiel saw this. He saw the waters issuing out from under the door of the house of God going out. Oh, praise the Lord. The Lord himself, the Lord of glory, is going to set up his kingdom. Hallelujah. Folks, I want you to understand. This is during the millennial reign. God, God hasn't even dealt with the devil yet. He'll be bound for a thousand years. Amen. There's going to be a millennial reign for a thousand years. Long before God deals with Gog, Magog, Tubal. Amen. Those are not going to be dealt with till after the thousand years. God is going to loose Satan for a little season. For a thousand, after the thousand years, he'll be loosed. Go out to deceive the nations. Amen. Praise the Lord. What's going to be going on on the earth during that thousand year millennial reign? Hallelujah. Well, I believe there's going to be education going on. Amen. You, you wonder, what am I going to be doing during the millennial reign? Well, I believe that you're going to not only be able to go in and out of the city, 
new heavenly Jerusalem during that time, but you'll also come down unto the earth, amen, and just like the angels, and you will be teaching men about God, amen, that they might be saved. Because I'm going to tell you people, just because the nations are walking in the light of the city of the new heavenly Jerusalem doesn't mean they can enter in. Amen? They got to come in the same way you and I came in, and that's through the door. They got to come through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are they going to be willing to bow? Well, every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess, but are they going to be willing to do it willingly? Amen? That's where we see those that are going to rule with a rod of iron. What's the rod of iron for? There's going to be a rule. God's not going to allow lawlessness in his kingdom. Amen. You think you see police officers with their rods, you think that's a big deal? You think the armies marching on the United States, uh, you, you, the United Nations is a big deal? You haven't seen you haven't seen those that are going to overcome and be granted a rod of iron to rule with Jesus in his kingdom. They're not going to allow anything. Are you listening? Going to rule his kingdom with a rod of iron. There won't be any un uh, lawlessness. There won't be anything going on. Amen. Even those that don't bring their tenth of their, of their increase of their field are going to find themselves without any rain. That's why God's kingdom is going to be a kingdom of peace. There's going to be a lot of examples. During the millennial reign, there's going to be examples under the rule of Christ. Hallelujah. They're not going to hurt and destroy in all his holy mountain. Even though men will still be deceived after a thousand years, unconverted, unsaved. Listen to me, people. You think, you think the police state that everybody fears coming is a big deal? You think the military is a big deal? You haven't seen Christ reign. You haven't seen the Lord of glory reigning with his saints. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah sitting with him in his throne and in a position of authority. You better be living right. You better be holy if you think you're going to reign with him. The lawless are not going to reign with Christ. The lawful are. We must be lawful. Amen. We must be lawful, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when you look at some of these places in the earth and the way that they handle capital punishment, you go to the Middle East, you get caught stealing, get your hand cut off. Amen. You think Christ is going to reign in a way that people are not going to take him serious? I don't believe so. Amen. I believe God's going to give plenty of example. This is what happens when you disobey. People, There's going to be people on the earth in the millennial reign that are not going to want to obey. They're going to have stubbornness and rebellion in their hearts. After a thousand years, the devil's going to go out and deceive the nations. Are you going to be with Christ not as a police officer with a pistol? Listen to me. Not as a Muslim with a sword. 
How are the saints, the overcomers, going to reign with Christ and rule with a rod of iron? What is that rod of iron? Is it literally a rod of iron? That rod has to do with a shepherd's rod. There's going to be examples in God's kingdom. There's going to be punishment in God's kingdom in the millennial reign. How many know that? Oh, yes. The Lord says they're not going to hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. Can you imagine a thousand years under Christ's reign? I'm not talking about David of old. I'm not talking about a man sitting on the throne. We're talking about Christ. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his name. And we're not talking about gender here either. We're not talking about man and woman talking about the sons of God. Hallelujah. He said we shall be as the angels. Amen. Glory to God, people. He says, I'll give you places. I'll give you places among these that stand by. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done, Lord. His kingdom's coming, people. There's no kingdom on this earth that even can come close to Christ's kingdom. A kingdom of righteousness? Folks, listen to me. During the millennial reign, it's going to be justice. Are you listening? Real justice. Hallelujah. Holiness unto the Lord. Going to have the fear of God, brothers and sisters. The justice in this world is a joke compared to the Lord's kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen, the demons are not going to be out and about. And the devil himself will be bound a thousand years. So it'll be basically a people that are with fallen natures, with rebellion and stubbornness, under the rule of Christ. Are you going to be one that's ruling or one that's being ruled over? Or will you even make it that far? Glory to his name. Praise your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Help us, Jesus, to be faithful now. Help us to be faithful now, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, to be faithful now. Help us, Lord, to surrender and to allow you to subdue every part of us. That we will come under your authority, Lord. We'll never have authority with you until we allow you to have authority over us. Hallelujah. Submitting to you, Jesus. Submitting to you. Flesh and blood will never inherit your kingdom, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord, people. Rule with a rod of iron? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. Thank you for the truth, Lord. He's holy, people. The Lord is holy. Hallelujah. 
comparing to Christ's kingdom, all the kingdoms of this world, all the military might, they're, they're, they're wimps comparing to Christ's kingdom. They don't have any backbone. Amen? They have no backbone. I'll tell you this, the Marines today is nothing compared to what they used to be. They used to be a force to be reckoned with. Christ's kingdom is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I'm going to tell you people, under Christ's rule, there'll be no rebellion or stubbornness. Amen. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You either bow now, or you'll bow later. Against your will. Amen. Can you just see someone not willing to bow to Christ and his authority? Not willing to bow? Look at the authority that Joseph had with Pharaoh. What would happen if someone disrespected Joseph? under Pharaoh's rule. Can you imagine what's going to happen under Christ's rule? Oh, Brother Joseph, he's just going to forgive them. <laughs> That's what they believe. That's what they really believe. They ought to be just thankful they're alive. They better obey. They better submit themselves. Oh, Brother Joseph, I never heard the gospel like this before. I know. I told you I had some heavy things to share with you. Can you bear them? It's a real kingdom, people. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If your ways please him, if you are willing and obedient, amen, then you will experience his good pleasure. Praise the Lord. You don't want to be on the other side of that. And it won't be Jesus himself ruling as far as making decisions and judgments upon those during the thousand year millennial reign. It'll be those that have overcome and those that are ruling and reigning with him with the rods of iron under his authority. Don't, don't rejoice because devil is a subject unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't even rejoice because the devil is subject to you. You should rejoice when a soul is saved. When your own soul was saved. Amen. Rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you see what Jesus meant by that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I really feel the presence of the Lord, people. So strong right now. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.